My name's Heidi. I'm a freelance jeweller and I work out of Studio 41 in Strathalbyn, South Australia. I'm going to take you through some of the tools that we use when we do gemstone threading. I call it gemstone threading because it's not just pearls and it's definitely not beading because beading goes on tiger's tail. <laughs> yeah. So today, um, this introductory one, I'm just going to go through some of the things you'll need and that you'll need to get before you start your threading projects. Okay, obviously you'll have your gemstones, um, things that we use as far as uh, thread goes, we use, um, I'll just take this off, we use two different kinds of um, silk, there's uh, natural silk um, and this is a griffin um, silk. It comes in various sizes from 0 through to 16. I think it even goes as high as 22. Um, these ones, the, the higher sizes are for gemstones that have larger holes, which I don't know whether you can see that. Um, so you can get different colours in this. There's two kinds in, in the thread. You've got high performance, which I use to hold um, gemstones that have crystallographic structure. And when I say that, I mean they're more likely gemstones like um, sapphires and um, crystalline uh, gemstones are more likely to wear your silk. So you generally put them onto thicker silk. So that's, or, or higher tensile. So for um, sapphires, I would use this high performance. Okay. Another thing you'll need is, um, now, now this thread actually comes with the needle on it. So you get so many meters in there. I usually get a, 45 centimetre necklace and a bracelet out of it, but that will come with time. The needles that you can get, they come in various lengths and um, gauges. These are used for when you get your silk on a reel and you just cut off what you require. And they've got a hole in the back of it and they're really, really fine. So they go through um, several gemstones all at once, which is kind of handy. Another thing that's a handy thing to have is a gemstone picker-upper. So you just literally slide that in. It helps you to pick them up and move gemstones quicker. So that's another thing. Uh, you will use um, flat nose snipe pliers. This is used sometimes if a um, thread gets a little bit stuck and you need just a little bit more oomph to pull it through. So they're always handy to have. You'll need some sharp scissors. So nail scissors are often really good for this. These, these are actually Fisker scissors because I do a lot of this. So I've got some good quality ones there. You'll need some hypo cement. I use um, GS hypo cement. You can get it any jewelry um, tool retailer. Then we use a thing called GIMP. GIMP comes in various sizes. It comes in sterling silver. You can get it in gold and um, you can get it in gold plate. Now if you've got, if your findings are silver, you would use silver. If they're gold, you would use gold. Um, some people don't mind if you use gold plate gimp, um, some people do. Then you will have some um, beeswax. I generally like to use beeswax primarily because it's not as, um, it doesn't hold dust like other waxes do and definitely don't use lip gloss. So I often see jewelers use um, lip gloss or lip balm to lubricate their saw blades. Don't use that on your silk. You'll see why later. That's about all you'll need to get started to learn how to do some threadings. 
couple of notes on when you're taking in a job, a gemstone threading job. I generally don't refer to them as pearls, sapphires or amethyst or whatever uh, they might look like, primarily because um, if, this, if they're not that and you've called them that, then you're putting yourself in a position where you may be obligated to replace the um, article with the gemstone that you called it. So as much as it grates my cheese, I refer to them on the job packet as beads. Now, when you take in a job, you must always count your gemstones. Count them while they're on the string or if they're spread everywhere, get a couple of little containers and count them. Get your client to count them as well and to sign off on the number of gemstones that are to be threaded. Uh, at the time that you're counting them, um, take particular notice to um, assess the gemstone to be able to identify whether it's got wear and tear on it, whether it's got a fracture on it, whether it's got an abrasion, and just make note of that uh, on your job packet when, and so the customer knows that um, you've identified it. This gives the customer a little bit of reassurance because they know that they're actually, you're actually paying attention to detail of their product. Um, and it also will give you the opportunity uh, in some cases to maybe replace a gemstone or to um, source some other gemstones for them to, to keep it looking good. Um, apart from that, that's about it. Other videos that we will be um, putting together are um, how to thread mixed gemstones, um, how to do threading for chokers, three strand, five strand. We'll be looking at um, medieval techniques. Um, what else? And we'll be doing a little bit of um, problem solving along the way. You know, what happens if you lose your ne needle? What happens if your needle snaps off? Um, lots of different things can go wrong, but once you get the hang of it, it won't be an issue at all. All right. Well, thanks for your time. I look forward to teaching you and sharing with you this um, ancient of skills. Oddly enough, this particular trade skill was probably the first one that was ever taught or used in our industry because uh, beaded necklaces or gemstone necklaces is what ancient people used to wear and trade in. So, you know, we were there when it all started, all economies. Anyway, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.